And the Bank of England top economist, he's called Hugh Pill, he's upset quite a lot of people. He says we've got to get used to being poorer and not expect pay rises. That's right. He was talking on a podcast in the United States. There was a, a reluctance to accept, he said, that we are all just worse off. He said that workers had to stop asking for higher wages and businesses need to stop passing costs on to customers. Well, joining us for more is uh, economist Justin Urquhart Stewart. Good morning, Justin. Good morning. It, is there any grain of truth to this, what he's saying? Oh, and, and, it was, and it was just tone deaf. Did he have a slight point? Well, I think, think he's probably got a new name now, which is probably Poison Pill. Yeah. Yeah. It's not often you see the head of the economics and Bank of England on the front page of the Daily Mail. Yeah. That's not his job. Giving no. us a bitter pill to swallow. <laughs> but, yeah, the answer is uh, the, the two things here. A, we have built up a huge amount of personal debt, um, and some of that's down to misbehaviour by banks our own stupidity, um, also in terms of what's happened with interest rates. We've all been lulled into a situation where our money's cheap, very easy to get hold of, interest rates are permanently at half percent. For those of a certain age, which I know doesn't include either of you, who may think back to the 1970s, remember it at 25 percent, sadly. Yeah. I'm watching my father with a fixed pension, losing a quarter of its value in a year. It's really, really dangerous. So we've got two things. One, helping those people who are in that situation. And B, heaven's sake, educate people coming out of school and university as to what they need to do. Um, I'm all very well known about maths at 18, but actually we need to start saving from the uh, naught. I don't expect babies to go around with cans, but no, family can be contributing it. Think about what the typical dysfunctional British family is like. It's actually got assets in different bits, um, but the younger ones are probably building up debt. And you're going to have to think more about managing that money across the family, not just as individuals stuck with this albatross of £50,000 worth of student debt to start but, with. But it is so tinnied, isn't it, Justin? This man is on a £190,000 well, salary. That is what... What is the average wage in this country? 31, 32,000? Yeah. Six or seven times the national average. And he's lecturing us to get used to not having any money. Yeah, I um, but patronising something or other comes yes, to the phrase. Uh, and it's, you know, there, this is a really... OK, he thought probably it was only listening, it was going to be a sort of quiet uh, issue, it's own... I'm talking did it on a podcast in America or something, didn't well, exactly. Nobody's going to hear it here. Exactly, no. We don't live in that world, do we? No. No. That probably just shows, actually, how much in touch with the real world yes. he really is. No, what you need here is someone not telling us, you're, you're all going to get poorer. Actually say, this is a bad situation, this is what we've got to do to try and put it yeah. right. For you and for the next generation and, coming through. And also, where were the economists like him when we were dishing out half a trillion pounds during lockdowns and furlough? If he'd said at that point, you can clamour for this policy, oh. but you are going to be poorer... Yep. That's because that's effectively what he's saying. This is this is the fact that we've got no money left because of the effects of the well, pandemic. I mean, well, we go right back to the uh, uh, banking crisis where yeah. we had suddenly had this one thing called quantitative yes, easing. Yes, yes, yes. Now you take an economic book, printing money, isn't it? Printing money. You could take an uh, economics book of thirty years ago. It didn't exist. No one knew what quantitative easing it did as a word. It was never used. Now, of course, it suddenly became acceptable. And, of course, you're quite right. It's actually printing money. Yeah. Uh, you're pr pr printing uh, paper money, fiat currencies, not mm. backed by anything, not backed by gold. You can do that for a while, but eventually someone turns around and says, I don't believe you, the emperor is somewhat sartorially challenged, and that's when people stop investing in your government debt. And why is that important to us? Because our government debt keeps most of society going. But this Bank of England's got form here. Remember Andrew Bailey? We oh, can't yeah. forget Andrew Bailey. The governor of the Bank of England, didn't he tell us when interest rates were only half a percent last year? Pretty much the same thing earning £575,000 a year, as I recall. Mm. Oh. Yeah, and it's, this it's, is it's, not what governors and youth economists of Bank of England should be saying. And they should be saying, look, these rates are ludicrously low. These are emergency rates brought in for the banking crisis. Yeah. The banking crisis is sort of over. There are still big issues to address. But they should be brought back to reasonable levels to educate people coming through that actually money ain't free. Yeah. Um, and you're going to have to, I'm afraid, take the responsibility for it. It's... What he said here is, uh, is a ludicrous way of actually putting it across and insulting to people. But realistically, actually, we need to actually tell people, look, this is what you need to be able to do. It's, you can be saved from this by managing it across the family. Um, because you think about the generations. Mm. Grandparents may own a house or something like that. Parents with a lot of outgoings and things. And our inflation is very different. Younger uh, people have better, lower rates of inflation because they buy electrical goods, which go down in price quite often. Um, whereas those of us of a certain age take drugs of a different type to try and keep us alive, and they get more expensive. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's planning that in advance, just as they were running a company. That's how you actually have to think about it. If you're on your own, it's, I'm afraid, really rather difficult. Um, but if there's a problem wrong to the great British dysfunctional family, you may not like your relations, but actually financially you're worth having, 
that's what you can try and do. And get, uh, but putting this up to people is just frightening the living daylight. The bank said anything about his, his interview? No, well, I haven't seen anything. I'm going to have to well, go and have a look at some other podcasts and find yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. They need some responsible commentary to say, no, this is dangerous, this is what we're yeah. doing about it, this is what you need to do about it. And there are some business leaders as well now calling for Jeremy Hunt to implement some tax cuts, quite clearly coming together to say, we need these tax cuts. Is he going to do it? Uh, no, no, he's not. I mean, but bear in mind, the main way we can actually get this economy moving, primary, the primary driver, of course, is the consumer buying stuff, but also the driver in terms of taxation are smaller companies. We're really good at setting up businesses in this country. Unfortunately, we're really bad at financing them to grow. Mm. Where are these companies? They're tech companies, often in those tech hubs all around the country. But we don't finance them properly to grow into bigger ones. We wait to the Americans come and buy them, take them back to Silicon Valley. Yeah. Um, do that, you'll create more jobs, more wealth, and, uh, and in this country. That doesn't cost the government very much. And we lumber them with higher corporation tax. Well, um, yes. I mean, and you hear some people say, oh, it's all about profits for huge corporations. Yeah. Small companies pay corporation tax. The, the, the biggest driver, the biggest uh, I don't know, tax earner in this country are the small businesses. Yes. They're the ones that are actually making the profits and doing it. And they are the businesses of tomorrow. Classic example when you see that uh, idiot from the CBI uh, representing a, a group of businesses. Look at the list. They're all the old businesses. Yeah. You won't find a small tech business run by a spotty individual with a good idea uh, mm -hmm. joining the CBI because um, they've got other more interesting things to do. And, of course, they're focusing actually on how they struggle to get that business going and grow. The large Large corporates, frankly, are yesterday's businesses. Focus on tomorrow and get the government not to put money into them, given the tax breaks, enterprise investment schemes, put that regionally so more money gets invested There's locally. A story in one of the papers say that Unipart it was considering major investment in Britain. It's going to do it in the United States instead because there are better financial incentives. I suspect the corporation tax rise is a factor. Yeah, precisely. I mean, you look at actually what uh, Biden's done. Not that you can necessarily remember what he's done. <laughs> um, but the but point you that, said it. <laughs> but, you know, the package they had to actually, you know, a huge package to try and stimulate the economy, which a lot of Americans are saying that's far too much. But the effect of that is exactly what you described. Companies will sit there and say, oh, I'm going to join in on that one. It's a fantastic tax break in America. Yeah. And so you're putting people off coming here. We've got to make ourselves look really attractive. When you had, again, a prime minister, a certain ex-prime minister saying, oh, he's, I can't use the words, he's yes. fed up with business. Um, that's where you get the money from. Mr. Johnson, who pays your, your wages? The answer is it's the business and the grafters to actually produce the profits, which you then tax. Overtax it, you kill it. I'm there's, a, there's part of me that works out, that can't work out what exactly they're doing with the economy in this country at the moment. Because it feels like it's a, an inevitable sort of resetting of the system when we're going to have these huge corporations, all these pubs, these restaurants are going to be closed. Where are those people going to go and work? I don't know. I have so many questions I don't see an answer for. The only thing I'm sort of keeping my fingers crossed a little bit is that with an election next year, maybe... Jeremy Hunt and Rishi Sunak are keeping their powder dry with some lovely measures to reduce the tax, to allow us to have more of our money left at the end of the month to spend in the run-up to the election. Well, there's one word, and we've said it before, you know, that runs an economy, and it comes from the politicians and, and, and the rest of us, confidence. Yes. If we don't have confidence... I have none, Justin. Right, but then we don't go out and spend as much. No. We don't invest in something. I sit there and say, am I going to start that business up now? It's a bit risky, I won't bother. Absolutely. If I've got politicians saying, look, we're laying... Out uh, the basis here to actually make sure you can set up a business and you will be rewarded for it in terms in time to come, not now. Mm. Um, and at the same time, make sure that individuals have the level of protection in terms of finding cheaper or easier ways of being able to manage their finance. Take things like credit unions, those sort of things. Really good ideas which provide cheaper debt for people and help manage their way out of it. And then for the next generation, make sure it's in the schools early, right from the you know, we heard every year naught, putting money into people's pensions. It may sound rather dull, yeah. but it's an asset which takes a long time. How do you get rich? The answer is slowly. Yeah. OK, Justin.